Welcome to Breakfast Club. <clears throat> How is everybody this morning? Make sure that you can hear me, see me. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We are going to talk about, good morning, Miss Nicole. <clears throat> we are going to talk about the stitch regulator today here um and oh thank you Gina I want to make sure not that screen one second wrong screen I'll get with it here we go wrong screen on the wrong side <clears throat> I'm not quite awake <laughs> I was up too late quilting morning everybody welcome we're ready to experiment and learn a little bit here with our um, stitch regulators many of you have them you may not have ever used it or um, anything along that line so that is going to be my goal today is to um, get you comfortable using it all right so this morning like I said what is a Bernina stitch regulator we commonly refer to that as a BSR in the world of Bernina okay so the stitch regulator is to do exactly what it says it's going to do it helps to regulate your stitching so that all of your stitches are pretty much the same length when you are free motion sewing with no feed dogs. And if you've ever done this before we ever had BSRs, that you would have a hard time getting your stitches to either be a good length or um, they're really, really tiny, they're giant, they're a mixture of everything. So that is what a BSR is here to do. <clears throat> it helps to re it reacts to the movement of your fabric and adjusts the speed of the needle um, as you speed up and slow down your fabric movement. The stitch regulator speed has nothing to do with the foot control or how much you are stepping on the gas. So that's one of the big things when you are moving to using a stitch regulator of having to kind of retrain your brain, especially if you have kind of taught yourself free motion quilting before we had regulators. So it does take some getting used to. Those of us that um, did master the technique prior to... Um, uh, prior to stitch regulators do find a stitch regulator a little more challenging until we find the right settings and then we learn to love it <clears throat> okay now this foot goes back to being compatible all the way back to the auroras when it was launched so this was the big thing that launched with the aurora 430 and 440 some machines come with this foot as a standard accessory. Some, it is an optional accessory. I think I've got all of the machines on here. I could be wrong. I could have missed one, but I did try to cover them all. Um, the Artista 6 series, the 200, the 7 series. The 200 has to be the upgraded 200. Um, the current and the Legacy 5 series machines all of the seven series machines new and legacy all of the eight series machines and all of our q series machines our q series machines actually have two stitch regulators mounted underneath of the machine inside the bobbin area this is what allows us to be able to use other feet and ruler work with stitch regulation so we can talk about that so <clears throat> A stitch regulator can stitch regulate both with a straight stitch and with a zigzag okay so if you look at this image here 
that we have the um, picture on the portrait on the right hand side is all straight stitch just free motion kind of thread painted the pineapple over on the left the leaves um, in the pineapple stem and the center of the orange were stitch regulated with a zigzag so you do have both options of a straight and a zigzag stitch when you are using the stitch regulator. Um, zigzag comes, um, a lot of people, people use it to thread paint, okay? So it's not something I would use on a quilt um, unless you're thread painting the quilt top and then planning to add a back to it um, later, okay? So let's look at the parts of a stitch regulator. So we have the plug. Okay, looks just like um, a um, plug for any sort of headphone. Okay, from back in the day. It is attached to the actual foot, and in the bottom of the foot is your sensor, and I'll show you that in just one moment. And then there are three soles that come with the foot there's the clear sole which that arrow is pointing in the wrong direction, I apologize. Um, this foot is cupped, so the sides kind of roll up on the side. Perfect for um, art quilters or high loft batting in your quilt. Quilts with like applique or embellishments that you're gonna be quilting up and over. The curve on this foot allows you to kind of not run into that, but kind of get up and over it. The closed, toe, closed sole foot is probably what you are most um, familiar with. This is the same as your foot number nine that many of us use to free motion quilt back in the day. It's also um, similar to 29, um, which is also a closed sole. Um, great for general free motion quilting, great for thread painting. And then we have an open sole open sole or open toe. Um, again, very similar to what you see um, on foot 24 and foot 73, both of which are feet that we would be um, free motioning with without a BSR. Um, really great if you need to see where you're going, okay? Um, following a line, anything along that lines. You cannot ruler work with the BSR foot with just any of these three sole options, okay? You cannot put a ruler up next to the any of these soles and be able to properly do ruler work, okay? So there are some aftermarket products that you can purchase to make the BSR work with ruler work, okay? but they are not part, um, they're not Bernina, I don't want to say approved, but they're not Bernina manufactured. Okay, so let's take a look at your BSR. Okay, so here's our BSR. This is the foam that comes in the package um, with the BSR. I, mine's out of the box because it lives in my um, travel case. So here's your foot. The foot attaches to the machine just like a um, standard presser foot, okay? We're all used to, very much used to that, you know, slides on, clips in place. Here's our plug. Plug plugs into the machine, depending upon your machine, will depend upon where it plugs into. Um, all of our current line machines, um, the mach it plugs into the back of the machine my four third, my Aurora's, my six series, my um, uh, early generation 530, 570's, it's in the back left corner of your, um, underneath your needle, under by your light. I'll show you when I go over to the machine, I'll kind of point it out and I'll give you a trick on how to find it. It is um, a green color so that you can see it, but it plugs in from up underneath the machine. And then we have the three soles. So you've got your open sole, 
your clear, and then the close that's on it. To change soles, you're, there are two buttons on each side right here that you would squeeze, and this slides off, okay? And then when you take the one that you want to put on, you just line it up, slide it in, and it will snap in place. And here's your sensor. Okay. My this is what reads the speed of the fabric as it passes by the fabric. Okay. This is how it knows to speed up and slow down. I do suggest that if you are quilting um, and you've marked with chalk or anything along that line, that occasionally you stop and clean this sensor. Okay. You don't need liquid or anything, your lint brush, little Q-tip, something along that lines, just to make sure that the chalk doesn't build up and impede the sensor from being able to see effectively, okay? So if you start to have issues um, and you've marked your quilt with chalk, just stop and give that a little cleaning and see if that fixes our problem, okay? So those are the parts. So let's look at how to set up the machine for using the stitch regulator. With your stitch regulator, <clears throat> you're going to lower the feed dogs. My eight series machine owners, when you attach the BSR to the machine, your feed dogs automatically lower for you, or you can manually lower them. If you don't lower them, you will be prompted on the machine to lower the feed dogs. You cannot use a stitch regulator with your feed dogs in the up position. Okay. Again, we're going to attach it like any other presser foot in terms of um, clicking on the machine like normal and then um, locking in. And then we take the, oops, um, we take the cord, bring it up and around, and plug it into the appropriate receptacle on the machine. Now this is the location that you will find on all the current 7 series machines, 8 series machines, um, 5 series machines. Um, the older machines, it's right up underneath in the back left hand corner um, of the machine. So you're going to come up from the bottom. <clears throat> and if you haven't seen it or looked for it, just turn your machine on the side and it's usually a green um, plug that you're going to plug it into. Okay. And then once you have plugged in your BSR, your screen changes. And it changes to let you know that the BSR has been plugged in and has been, um, the machine recognizes that you are in uh, stitch regulation mode. You basically, to know that you are in stitch regulation mode, you lose all your other stitches except for straight and zigzag. You also will find that there are two buttons there that um, have the word, the numbers one and two. There's usually a button there that also reads, it's hard to see here, but it says BSR. Okay, and I'll show you that as well. Okay, so let's go ahead and put this foot on the machine just so that you can see. So again, it's gonna go on just like a regular presser foot. The thing to know is that the BSR does sit at an angle. So when you're trying to put it on, don't try to put it on with the foot straight at you because it's not gonna go on very easily. Um, so it does sit at kind of like um, one o'clock. And then I'm gonna take this cord and I'm gonna plug it in to the back of the machine. And like I said, if you don't have a receptacle in the back of your machine, typically right here in the back left corner, the plug is there for you to plug in your BSR. If you don't know where it's at, um, check your owner's manual or drop me a note and I will gladly um, get you some images or show you where um, it's located, okay? So once we have the BSR attached to the machine, this is the screen that appears, okay? So 
If you have a current line machine, you'll actually see that you'll kind of get an image of the BSR sole. You will have, your machine will recognize that we are using foot number 42. That is the presser foot number for a BSR. My feed dogs are dropped. Okay, I have pressed, I lowered them on the machine. And I highly suggest using a straight stitch plate a zero millimeter or a zero millimeter cut plate when I'm using stitch regulation. When I'm free motion quilting in general, I prefer to use um, a straight stitch plate. It gives more support to your needle, your thread, and your fabric to help you produce a better um, tension and quality stitch that's there. On this machine, um, I'm, work, I'm showing you the screen of a 790, um, all the classic line machines. Right at the bottom here, you have a button that says BSR, and my BSR currently has like a white box around it. Some other machines, it may be a yellow box, um, but when that box is highlighted, so either a white box or a yellow box around it, that means that... Um, that you're going to uh, not, no, hold on. Let me answer a question. No, with the zigzag stitch, I would use a regular stitch plate. With a straight stitch, I would use a straight stitch plate. Sorry, I should have been clearer. Thank you, Miss Linda. So if I switch to a zigzag stitch, I'm going to um, change to a nine millimeter or even a five and a half millimeter stitch plate depending on how wide you want your possible zigzags to be. Okay. All right. Now, <clears throat> let me go back here. When the white box or yellow box is around the word BSR, that means you are going to use the stitch regulator to regulate. If you select that, it is no longer active, which means now you're just using this foot like a standard free motion foot you are in control of your stitch length. The machine is not going to regulate for you, okay? So if you're using your stitch regulator and things don't seem to be working right, double check that your BSR is actually active and that you didn't accidentally um, touch it or deactivate it, okay? The next thing to look at is on your screen, you will probably find a picture of a speaker, okay? And then two buttons that give you the options of one and two. I'm going to talk about the speaker first. There is a beeper that happens when you are moving too fast for the stitch regulator to actively and consistently regulate your stitching. Now, the stitch regulator can regulate up to a thousand stitches a minute, but if you're moving faster than that, there's an audio tone that happens. If you don't want that audio tone, okay, you can turn it off. You will get a visual um, on your machine when you have the audio turned off. And the visual will be that your start stop button on the machine will blink red. And typically I believe the screen also blinks red. And then we have mode one and mode two, and that's what these are, okay? These are not stitch one and stitch two, these are modes, okay? So let's look at what modes are and what they do. They, the modes basically are telling you how the needle is going to react when you give the machine power, okay? And I'll demonstrate this on fabric, but I wanna kinda of go over it first. Mode one, the needle is going to keep moving whether or not you are moving, okay? So if you give the machine gas and you leave your fabric sit in place, the needle is just gonna go up and down and it, you can use that to, um, Secure a stitch, okay, that's how we knot in mode one. Um, we use this for, um, mode one is helpful with designs that have sharp points. 
things along that lines. And then in mode two, um, the BSR mode two, the needle stops when you stop moving the fabric. So, or when you start, the needle's not going to start moving until you start. So this eliminates the small stitches that can happen in place, especially if you've kind of paused to not to figure out where you're going to move to next. There is a mode three. I didn't talk about it here because not everybody has it. Mode three is only available on the 770 um, plus machines and not, um, <clears throat> so the 770 pluses and the Q series. Mode three adds a basting mode to the stitch regulator. Okay, so you can actually go into mode three and it is set up to give you a basting stitch length that's there. Okay, so yes, it's only on the 770 in the Q series. At the moment, I don't know of any information about adding it to other machines um, in later firmware. It's just right now, those are the only two modes. Okay. All right. Let's move over here to the machine and look at these modes. Now, I like to use a um, Supreme slider. When I am free motioning, a Supreme slider is like a Teflon. Think of it like waxing the sliding board. When we used to go to the playground and you wax the slide. Now my, my Supreme slider has a couple of extra holes cut into it because if you're going to use this on a Q-series machine, you need to cut out the holes for your stitch regulator. Okay. Otherwise, when you buy a, a Supreme slider, it only has the center hole that's meant to line up with the hole in your stitch plate. But if you don't cut out the placement of your BSRs on a Q-series machine, you're not going to be able to stitch regulate. It took me a long time to figure it, longer than I wish to admit, that when we first time we put that on, on the Q-series machine, we could not figure out why my Q-series was not regulating stitches. And I think it took January and I a good half hour to like the light bulb to come on. So if you get a Supreme slider for either your Q series, for your Q series machine, just lay it down, line up the center hole with your center stitch plate, and then just kind of mark where you want to cut out the um, BSRs. That's there. Um, it is, it's a static tacky. And if it gets dirty or stops sticking, you can just run it under water. You can also take baby wipes to it and re-activate um, the tackiness. So we're going to look at mode one. <clears throat> I'm going to put my foot down. I'm going to use the heel kick on my machine to raise and lower my needle. And then I'm going to raise my foot to pull my bobbin up. Okay. Now... The default stitch length when you come into stitch regulation is a two. You can adjust the stitch length on your machine. You can also, I suggest that you take the slide speed control on your machine. So this little guy, I suggest taking and moving that as high as it will go. It's not going to matter because remember, this foot is ultimately controlling your speed. But we want to make sure that if it needs to stitch at full speed, that we're allowing the machine to stitch at full speed. So <clears throat> your goal is to get your stitching to look like you had done it with a straight stitch with feed dogs up and a walking foot. So if you need a visual, I suggest stitching on a piece of fabric, a straight stitch. So you can kind of see what your standard stitch length looks like. So if at that two that defaults on the machine and at a speed that you can free motion, you feel like that stitch length is too small, increase it and then give it a try. So we're going to um, play with that here today. 
so that I'm going to give you the opportunity to kind of see that. So I've pulled my stitch length. I've pulled my bobbin thread to the top. I'm at the default stitch length. I am in mode one. Mode one means that when I step on the gas here in a moment, and I am going to step on the gas, pedal to the floor, okay? A red light is going to activate to tell you that the foot is active. When that red light is on, do not put your finger anywhere near the needle. The machine does not know the difference between fabric and flesh. Red light means power, okay? So I'm gonna step and you'll see that the needle's moving, whether or not my fabric is moving. I'm gonna start stitching. I'm gonna take my foot off the gas. I have my machine set to stop with the needle in the down position so that I can trim my thread. And then I'm gonna stitch. You'll see if, let me move that a little bit so you can see. You watch, I have this, the beeping turned off because I, I, I hate the beep, but the visual, that red light blinking means I'm moving too fast. Now, it doesn't mean you're going to get giant stitches, but those stitches in that area may not be 100% the same size as the stitches that are in this area. And for me, it's, it's, you really can almost not tell the difference between it. Okay, so that's at a two. I'm actually gonna take my stitch length up to about a 2.5 and I'm gonna quilt. And I know it's hard to see, but the stitches, and I'll, when I take it out of the machine here, um, let, me, um, let me pull my bobbin up. That stitch is definitely bigger than this stitch length that's happening here. And it's hard to see, but I suggest playing with your stitch regulator on your machine and adjusting your stitch length. It's all gonna depend upon how fast you can quilt. You wanna find, and Amanda talks about all the time, of listening to your machine and finding that right speed and movement. Your machine will kind of hum. It doesn't sound like it's working too hard or too slow. It just, there is, there is, a, there is a sound difference in them, okay? Mode two. So I'm just gonna reach up to the screen. I'm gonna hit number two, not stitch two, mode two. I'm going to pull my bobbin thread up. <clears throat> I'm going to step on the gas. Red light. But my needle's not moving. If I sit here for longer than seven seconds, that red light will turn off and the foot will go deactivate. Okay? So if you pause and don't move, it will turn itself off, okay? So I'm gonna step on it again. If you want a knot in mode two, you have to use the knot function either on your screen or on your machine. It will tie a knot and then you can start stitching. If I pause to think about, hmm, where do I want to go next, the needle stops. It does not stop in the down position because there's still power to the foot. It has to be up because it's anticipating your next move. Okay? You may also find that the use of gloves, okay, or um, quilt rings, Anything along that lines may help you be able to move your fabric a little bit better. Um, those are always 
handy and helpful to use, especially if you have, you know, like grip issues um, in your hands. I'm gonna go grab a pair. Um, so quilt gloves. And then these little guys are the other ones. Um, Bernina makes a set of gripper rings they are designed for the Q series machines. Uh, they will work. One of them will work on the seven series machines. And the other one is it will work, but it really limits. You don't get the full use of the ring because it hits the inside of the machine. But these little guys are called grip and stitch. They're like um, foam that you can grip these versus trying to grip this okay there there's two sizes the smaller one goes on the inside of your machine and the larger one to the outside and then you can use that it's i'm barely even using my hands to hold on to anything okay so, and then you can reposition um, where you're at. And if you want to tie another knot at the end, you activate your knot on your machine and then step on the gas and the machine will tie a knot. Okay. <coughs> All right. If we look at... <coughs> If we look at zigzag stitching, so zigzag stitching, again, you have a mode one and a mode two in zigzag. So if I travel straight up and down, I zigzag. If I travel left and right, I'm zigzagging, but I'm getting a straight line. So it almost looks like, um, Um, a stem stitch that's in the machine. So if you really want a true zigzag in your BSR, you can play with uh, your movement. You do have the ability with zigzag to adjust your stitch width. You have, I think you can go up to uh, five and a half millimeters on your zigzag. so that you can um, play with the density, uh, the width. You can also adjust your stitch length on it as well and adjust that and play with it. So there's a lot of room for um, alterations, okay, that can be made with your um, stitch regulator, okay. All right, let me, if you have questions, please ask. I will be happy to answer them. A couple of things. Practice, 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 okay? The stitch regulator isn't gonna make you a master free motion quilter, okay? All right, so it's going to take away the need for you to ultimately master your stitch length, but it is not going to make you know exactly how to travel and where to travel. Okay. So don't blame it on your stitch regulator that you can't quilt feathers. Okay. That's the first thing. That <laughs> it's magic. It's just not that magical. Okay. So just note that it's going to kind of take away that you have to learn two things, that you have to learn not only how to keep your stitches the same, but also how to actual draw it, a quilt pattern. You just remove one of the things you can focus on the other. <laughs> uh, use a straight stitch plate unless you're doing the zigzag stitch. Um, the LED light means the foot has power. Keep your fingers out of the way. I have been bitten by a BSR. Um, the one time I've sewed through my finger, knock on wood, <clears throat> was 
when I was working on somebody else's machine and their BSR, we always laugh about it with Miss Barbara because it was her machine. She used to, Miss Barbara used to work here. Um, we, I used to laugh because her machine bit me and we determined that it doesn't play well with strangers. Um, so, uh, yeah, it just stitched right through my finger, but that's okay. One stitch, a broken needle, the three pieces came out of my finger like uh, splinters a few, about a week later. Um, if you are working with a lofty batting or quilts with thick seams and you feel like you are pushing really hard to get things to move um, through the machine, look at your presser foot pressure. On the current machines, your presser foot pressure is this icon right here on um, the screen. It's the picture of the foot with what looks, what's supposed to be like a little weight on it. The lower the number, the lower the pressure, okay? That means how much or how hard <clears throat> when you lower the presser foot that this foot comes down and sits on the fabric, okay? <clears throat> now, on older machines, you're going to find that your presser foot pressure is a dial on the, um, let's see here, it's going to be on the side of your machine, right, right in like this area. It's a little uh, rotating dial that you can adjust and then it corresponds to a number on your screen um, that's there. So that will help with, you know, especially if you're feel like you're pushing really, really hard. Supreme slider again is going to help with the drag. Uh, quilting gloves or the quilting guys can, um, the grips and stitch can help with your grip and movement as well. And I didn't talk about it, but you, if, when I teach the BSR, I take away my foot control. You don't need a foot control to use a BSR and you actually use your start stop button. Okay. That's on the machine and that can be helpful to help train you to know that your foot has nothing to do with the speed that that needle is moving. I find when I use a foot control that after a little bit of quilting, my foot starts to get lax and the moment I kind of take a little bit off the foot control, the foot stops. So I, um, a lot of times will use my start stop button. <clears throat> The Miss Linda asked if there's a max to the stitch length on a straight stitch. Four millimeters is the maximum stitch length um, on a uh, straight stitch with the BSR. Okay, so let me pull that up. I'll show you what a four, a four millimeter looks like. So I'm going to press and hold this button, my start stop button, until the needle moves or until the red light becomes active. And then I'm going to press it again to turn it off. And so that's a four millimeter. It's, it's a little small for basting, but I mean, it could, it could work, um, if you needed it, but <clears throat> it is definitely, um, the BSR three mode is much nicer for true basting of a quilt. Now I um, mentioned this the other day to somebody and they never thought about it, but if you are going to, um, free motion, your own, um, your own quilt and the thought of layering and basting your quilt, whether 505 safety pins and then having to take all those safety pins out. It's just not your thing, okay? Long arm quilters will layer and machine base your quilts for you, okay? For a fee, but we load it on the frame. We, you know, everything's held nice and tight. We use a brightly colored thread so that your quilt is basted. We give it back to you. You can do your free motion and then you can easily take that basting out. It may be something worth exploring, um, save you time and frustration 
and then you can focus more on your free motion. Okay. All right. Um, the BSR this month is 25% off. So if you don't own a BSR um, and want one, this is the time to buy it. It is not a cheap foot. Okay. So with the discounts about $750, I think. No, $725, I think. I don't know. Don't don't quote me. Um, it's $9999 full price. So you can take 25% off of that. <laughs> it is up online um, and can be ordered. If you have BSRs from other machines, so let's say you have a 440, you can use that same BSR on another machine, okay? It does not have to be, it's not like buttonhole feet where we tell you that the buttonhole foot should really stay with the machine that it came with. BSRs can be used um, on any machine. Occasionally there is updates for the BSR. There's a firmware update. And what happens is um, you won't know um, for the most part, but when we update the firmware on the machine and there is a portion that needs to be updated to the um, computerization of the stitch regulator, when you plug your BSR in the next time, you'll see a little icon that shows like information transferring to the BSR. Just let it finish and that is updating your BSR and then you'll be ready to go. <clears throat> Oh, you're fine, Miss Indy. The BSR-3 is found on the um, Q-Series, any of the Q-Series, and on the 770 Pluses. So those are, um, those are the only machines right now that have BSR-3. <clears throat> Do I have any other questions from you today about... Um, Stitch regulators. It does take practice, like I said. Play with it. Experiment with it. You, depending upon, the same rules go here as if you were free motioning. I always use same thread top and bottom. Just makes tensioning easier. Make sure that your needle is the right size to match your weight of your thread. Okay? If you, when you quilt, if you are having a tension issue or something like that, you can adjust your upper tension. You can make some adjustments to your lower tension. Um, oh, thank you, Gina. So 750. <clears throat> um, on a Q-Series, the Q-Series machine has Kickstart um, on a Q-Series. Kickstart does not apply to the... Um, domestic machines. So kickstart is um, on the Q-series because we don't have a start stop button. Um, we activate kickstart on the screen. We tap our foot control to start the machine. Okay. We don't need to keep our foot on the gas. We just tap it. <clears throat> and then when you're finished quilting and want to stop, you just tap the foot control again. Okay. <laughs> So that's kickstart and it's only on the Q series and only on the Q series sit downs. So that's the 20, the 16 and the 16 pluses. But again, I highly suggest getting out your BSR, play with it. Don't be afraid to adjust your stitch length. Don't be afraid to play with, make sure your speed's all the way up um, and you know, work with tension, things like that. The biggest thing that we see with uh, the biggest issues that come to me is that I am seeing what they call eyelashing. So eyelashing is kind of on, um, when you're going around a corner on the wrong side, you see your top thread kind of comes down and it kind of looks like eyelashes. They call it eyelashing. That is typically not a BSR issue. That is a you issue. That is you pulling or moving the quilt while the needle is still in the down position, okay? So kind of relax when you're going around 
you know, I always tell people, have a glass of wine, turn on some music, um, because if you, a lot of them will also tell you if you put in music or turn on a podcast or something, that takes whatever side of your brain and focuses on something else versus focusing you and stressing over that it kind of relaxes you and allows you to quilt um, a little bit easier um, in that in that realm. So eyelashing is typically a um, a result of pulling. So whether it's you pulling or if the quilt is hanging off the back of your table or you know on the front of you, something along that lines, that is a lot of time where eyelashing comes from. All right. Well, I think that's all. I don't see any other questions for today. Well, I hope I've encouraged you that to go find your BSR, pull it out, and let's do a little, little free motion, okay? Practice, play with it. I'm not saying grab the king size quilt that needs to be quilted, but pull out some scrap quilt sandwiches. Um, we've all got those random orphan quilt blocks that we haven't used. Throw a backing on it and a batting, scrap batting, because we've all got it, and just play. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you, everybody. I hope you have a great weekend, and I will see you here in a few weeks, not next week, week after. Our next breakfast club, we're going to talk about panels and quilt panels and how to use them, what to do with them. We're going to talk about how to design and things along that line. Thank you, everyone. Have a great day, and I will see you all soon.